Hey guys, this is what if. Well, Deku was Spider Man 2099 Part 3. Now, let's just dive right into this fan fiction. Now, last time, we ended it off on a little bit of a cliffhanger. It wasn't really much of a cliffhanger, it was more or less more of an introduction. As this masked or hooded figure that's been following Deku would have been calling himself, well, his brother. As Deku, last time, would have gone to his father's research and would have looked into his father's emails, phone calls, voicemails, emails, and everything to try to figure out what was going on. Was there any traces of him having a brother or did his father have a past or secret family? But yet again, he was discouraged and automatically just trying to bury himself into this work, trying to figure out, does he actually have a brother? But he didn't want to believe this, seeing that his father would have never cheated on his mother, and his mother would have never lied and kept another child a secret from him. But Deku would have been broken out of this as he would have been on a phone call, as it would have been Ida. As Ida would have had his number, plot reasons, and also Ida and Deku were somewhat of acquaintances slash friends. A little bit of. Not like friends friends, because like Deku really got pissed off at him and bodied him last episode doing the combat training. But still, yet again, Deku and Ida knew each other from, like, school times and automatically just, like, knew of each other and had numbers because of some outings they had with common or mutual friends. Now, Ida called him saying that you're kind of late and that Azal was about to call attendance. Ida getting, you know, really pissed off because he didn't want to have a messed up class attendance with Deku. Now, Deku rushed to school, swinging the building the building sneaking by multiple pro heroes, eventually sneaking through the window, getting in class before Zao looked back and calling on Deku, as Deku would have said here. As the class would have been chilling, and eventually the class would have been told that they are going on a field trip about 20 minutes into their whole review of the class. As they're going to the USJ, they do so train with some pro heroes. As the class is taken there, as they are told that All Might will meet, the, meet up with them later on, but for now he's dealing with some problems or dealing with some stuff. As we're going to switch to the streets, as All Might would have been taking down villains and things like that, as he would have been on his way to pretty much uh, the US, the uh, USJ. As he would have been jumping to building the building, jumping across the street, eventually coming across a robbery. As he would have stopped the robbery, basically one of the robbers being a quote unquote very proclaimed spider-man villain as he would have taken out some sort of gauntlet shocking all might pushing all might back a few feet as all might would have been shocked by this push as this would have been a modern type of version or quirk version of shocker as the cuffs would have been a support item as this quirk user would have been shocker in the my hero academia universe as this quirk was basically able to exhibit short very weak pulse waves from his fingertips and his fist but with the support item, it can be pushed through sonic waves and blast. So the gauntlets pretty much multiplied his power. All Might would have gotten pissed halfway through the fight as he would keep on getting pushed back away from the villain. Eventually, him getting closer to the villain and knocking him out with a short smash to the forehead. As we would see, eventually All Might would go back on his way towards the area of the USJ. Now, the class would have gone to the USJ, them being in their hero costumes, Deku being his 2099 Spider-Man fit. And uh, eventually might change his outfit into the more white Spider-Man 2099 fit. But for now, that's my favorite fit of Spider-Man 2099. So I'm going to stick with it. Now, eventually, we would have seen the class walk in there, meet up with 13. As they would have started to talk and 13 giving the whole speech about how quirks are very dangerous in the wrong hands. And that you need to learn how to use your quirk and different, you know, distracts your different, you know, astrophies and other things like that. As he would have gone on talking more and more, eventually Deku being, you know, a little bit discouraged, not discouraged, but honestly just being distracted, looking around, and eventually would have seen a black dot out of nowhere in thin air, but it soon would open up into a big portal. As heroes would have seen it, or basically the class, and Zao would have seen it, as villains would have started to pour out of this portal. As low rank villains and thugs would have started to buzz out of this portal, coming towards the students and towards 13. As 13 would have been told by Zao to get the students out of here, as he would have started to fight against these low rank villains 
and basically body molly whop them and literally started doing one piece chicken meals with no biscuit going crazy up in there him literally taking one dude and slam dunking him into another dude's forehead and straight up taking one dude and shoving his booty cheeks of somebody else's booty cheeks i don't even know what i'm talking about but the point is azawa was pinning in work way more than canon is out now the class would have been running off as deku would have been slightly jogging him not really being scared at all as he would have started to look around his surroundings and his suit layla telling him that it was of approximately 110 villains around this area or hostiles as she would have said as deku would have snuck away from the rest of the group and running off and scaling a building as he would have seen that 13 would have gone by by a mysterious quirk user with some sort of teleportation quirk quirk <laughs> quirk i mean as Deku would have seen this as he would have been, you know, kind of, not scared, but more or less very much confused and actually on guard now since this new quirk user has some sort of teleportation power that was strong enough to body somebody that has some sort of space quirk. As Deku would have scaled a building nearby as he would have looked around, eventually, well, the shower quirk guy coming up behind Deku as Deku's senses would have gone on. Him not having his fire sense, but him sensing some sort of shift in the air before the quirk user teleported behind him. As Deku would have thrown a punch towards this dude, hitting him in his neck part where the middle piece of his body is, as he would have been pushed back on his feet, or pushed back on his booty cheeks. As Deku would have started to try to mind wop this dude, throwing scratches, claws, and kicks, flips, dodges, and automatically just going hand-to-hand -hand fight with this dude. As this dude eventually would have teleported Deku about 100 feet in the air, or thousands of feet up in the air, right in the top of the dome of the USJ, as Deku would have started to fall down, near the water area as Deku would have made a web swinging towards the water area and swinging over the villains as eventually he would have landed on top of the boat him grabbing Froppy and Mineta and swinging them across the water before he got to the other side some sort of new no-name villain would have shot them with some sort of a hydro quirk pushing him into the water as Deku would have looked around as villains would start to swarm them as Deku would have taken out a gadget some sort of pulse grenade as he would have thrown it or take or pretty much released it mid in the water as it was like literally a foot away from him as it would have pushed everybody out of the water the deku being pushed into a nearby building crashing into a building having glass chucked into his suit as the suit would have been very much durable so it wouldn't really pierce him Mineta and froppy were knocked out and thrown into some sort of trash cans being safe but other villains were thrown into different pillars concrete pillars and automatically different buildings, gates, and other things like that being impaled and some of them breaking their necks on impact on some concrete buildings nearby. As Deku would have gotten up from the, you know, blast, basically being kind of hurt because he did get literally chucked out of the water by a sonic pulse all the way through another building into a glass building skyscraper type construct. As Deku would have gotten up looking around as he would have heard chuckling. As Deku would have looked around. And sorry for the, you know, confusion later on. I said something about how Mineta was going to be a part of, you know, I said something about Mineta and Froppy. Mineta wouldn't be there. Froppy was the only person that was on the boat that got saved by Deku. Now, what would happen is that, well, on the other side, the pretty much place, it would have been chuckling by some sort of unknown voice. As he would have jumped out, as he would have seen that Deku would have started to limp down the stairs, basically coming to a nearby building or a nearby room in the building as he would have started to make a swing for it towards Zhao to help him out as Zhao was getting overwhelmed. But out of nowhere, the lights in that building would have gone out as the window would have shattered as Deku would have been pushed into the middle of the room. As Deku would have looked up, as we would have seen a menacing dark figure, aka some sort of symbiotic bulky, just goopy, monsterish uh, silhouette and being or figure. As Deku would have looked up, as he would have seen this, basically being completely shocked in fear. As this would have been Venom 2099. As Venom 2099 would have started to rush towards Deku, as he would have started to fight. As Venom 2099 would have clawed him, scratched him, and I'm going to just say Venom for narrating purposes. As Venom would have started to scratch and claw towards Deku. As Deku would have started to dodge it, weave, and eventually throw some two-piece combos with no biscuit. With a life-size fridge 
type coke on the side that goes to started to go ham in it literally pouring all his combos sweep kicks and everything into this fight as eventually that could have gotten a little bit tuckered out but to his shock venom 2099 venom was unfazed definitely was scared out of his mind some of that, you know, a anime nani type shit. As Deku would have looked up as Spider Man 2099, greatest foe, Venom 2099. I'm just gonna say Venom. As Venom would have lunged towards Deku, grabbing him by his shoulders and chucking him through the ceiling into a nearby building. Really chucked him through the ceiling, through multiple other ceilings, out of the building and onto another building. As Venom 2099 would have swung to this other building climbing and scaling up the building seeing deku on the top of the ceiling not top of the ceiling but the top of the roof coughing up blood and with a broken arm as deku would have jumped up from you know his whole pile of blood he was making when he was on the floor as he would start to limp off trying to swing to another right building but venom would have came behind him crushing his web shooting on his wrist grabbing him by the back of the suit and literally chucking him down to the floor literally my whopping wwe styling him as he would have started to smack him around Goku Frieza type style, as he would have started to mollywop him. I mean, god damn. The amount of two piece combos, four piece, five piece, six piece combos, the amount of combos he was unleashing, unraveling on Deku was insane. Me personally, I would not let that disrespect slide. Me personally, me personally. I wouldn't let that amount of disrespect go unchecked. Like, he was molly whopping Deku. I mean, throwing him through different buildings. I mean, Goku type, Superman type fighting, bro. As Deku wasn't really even fighting at this point, he was just a punching bag. For real, for real. Like, Deku was knocked out about five times throughout the fight and then came back to consciousness and got molly whopped, bro. Man's pulled a whole Thor versus kratos ragnarok like bro dead ass venom halfway through the fight deku tried to get back up throwing multiple other gadgets disrupting venom's whole you know structure basically throwing a sound grenade that was opposed to just you know a sonic pulse another so another sonic pulse grenade pushing spider-man 2099 back but venom 2099 being shocked with his symbiotic powers falling off of him or some sort of symbiote coming off of him as he, he would have seen white hair and he would have seen a skin tone giving him a little rough depiction of what the person looked like underneath the suit or underneath the power as deku would have lunged over there trying all of his power pouring all of his strength into this one move grabbing the person that was in the symbiote punching them with maximum efficiency as Deku would have had bru bruised up eyelids and his suit would have been ripped to pieces. And him having more broken bones than Spider-Man after he got jumped by the Sinister Six. Bro was handling him. Pit all of his strength into one punch. Almost breaking this dude's whole neck in two. Literally almost decapitating this dude. But the symbiote was saving him last minute. As Deku would have been grabbed last minute, chucking into the ground as he would have been stabbed with a middle blade nearby. As it would have been some sort of ripped up char type rubble near them. As he would have stabbed through Ryan Deku's stomach. As Deku would have yelled out in pain, him being basically the middle stick being pulled out of Deku. Him being grabbed by the collarbone. Like literally not grabbed by the suit. Like literally grabbed by his freaking collarbone. This dude digged his claws into Deku's collarbone grabbing him from his bones and chucked him over the building as Deku would have been falling to his death as eventually the heroes would have shown up right after Shikaraku got shot in the kneecaps and hit a hole will you marry me type move and got saved last minute by the shadow court guy now the villains would have scrammed majority of them getting caught lesser known villains that got bodied in you know uh, you know, taken down by Deku earlier, and also Azawa and a couple others. All Might eventually defeating the Nomu as original, and Deku falling down to his death. As we have seen, a sniper type hero would have shot Venom dead in his kneecaps. As Venom would have hit a whole Will You Marry Me Chris Breezy type fit. As he would have gotten up healing really fast from a gunshot. As he would have fleed away from the fight. As he would have pretty much well been very pissed that he didn't end the whole thing as he would have seen last minute before he swing out of the 
you know, pretty much dome area of the USJ, that nearby hero with some sort of wings grabbed Deku before he could hit the ground, as he would have scoffed, saying, I'll get you next time, as he would have ran out of the dormitory, or ran out of the dorm area of the USJ, escaping without a single trace, as Deku would have been unconscious, as Deku would have been in the recovery girl's room, as Deku would have been told to wake up, as Deku was in critical condition, but since his self-healing plus recovery girl's help, he was pretty much nearly back to full health. As Deku tried to get up, as he would have been stopped by recovery girl, saying that you're in very bad shape, kid, even with my quirks and even with your type of regeneration quirk I guess you have, you aren't at full strength just yet. Now, Deku would have fell asleep, as I will only imagine Deku has some horrible flashbacks on how he got dropped badly by some dude in latex symbiotic leather. I mean, for real. Deku was having flashbacks. He, he woke up in a cold sweat. I would have been if I got that badly my wop, that badly destroyed, my cheeks absolutely obliterated. Literally, this boy literally got penetrated by this boy. Me personally, I wouldn't be able to show my face ever again in USJ. I'm telling you straight up. If you got that badly mollywopped, that badly destroyed, me personally, bro, I couldn't take that level of disrespect. But yet again, back to the story. As Deku would have woken up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night in the hospital, as he would have woken up, as he would have walked into the closet, or not a closet, but walked into the shower, as he would have washed his body washing off the dried blood on his wounds, his wounds being healed when he would took off the bandages. As Deku would have limped out of the shower, some of his bones still being very badly fractured, healed, but very badly fractured or cracked. Deku walking off as he would have limped off, eventually coming towards a nearby ship that was called by Layla. As Layla would have driven him back to the penthouse, Deku just escaping the hospital as he would eventually came back to his whole penthouse area type type beat as he would have fell asleep on the couch as Layla would have called some robot assistants to pick him up and handle him to his bedroom as Layla would have worked on some sort of replacement for his suit as it would have been a replacement for a suit basically it being made out of a more staple particles than his unstable particles that his original suit was made out of making it a lot more durable and making it in the attentive purpose to take beatings as badly as what happened to him yesterday or the following days of the usj now we would have seen that could wake up as the next following days that he had off he would have been recovering healing and also training his body and also trying to figure out weaknesses as one weakness he did learn throughout the fight was it was some sort of vulnerability to sound. But I'm gonna leave it off here, guys. So yeah, part four will be a, a little bit more, you know, Deku getting his whole mojo back after he got absolutely humbled. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Because like and subscribe, and as always, guys, have a blessed day. Deuces.